The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We kick off the tech earnings today. Microsoft, Google as well. Before we get some of the others on Thursday, we have a Fed decision tomorrow. We have jobs numbers on Friday. We pick things up and you already have some equities out with their numbers this morning. Nonetheless, we've got markets picking things up slightly in the red this morning even as we have yields continuing to drop a bit. Remarkable what we saw yesterday happen, right? We're talking about a 10-year yield right now, 4.05%. We get the S&Ps, you're negative by 10 points. You see the overnight action, you see the acceleration. Yesterday at three o'clock, did the program for my dad yesterday from three till four. Boy, this thing shot out of a cannon. Record highs across the board, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, just, just constant barrage. Was the NASDAQ? Yeah, futures didn't get there, but I think I think the Nasdaq 100 cash got there. Um, just records across the board. Dow we're nearing 40,000. Dow this morning off about 88 points. You're negative by two tenths percent. You get the Nasdaq 100 off by two tenths percent. S and P's off by two tenths, and the Russell particularly volatile off about half a percent. Bitcoin holding up relatively well after the slide we had a couple weeks ago following the ETF approval. I was listening this morning. Man, they are really on for the race for the Bitcoin ETF. And it makes sense, right? This is how it goes. There's only going to be one of them. Um, I was listening to Bloomberg earlier this morning. This one, BTCO, whatever this one is, it's like fifth right now. And they just put out that they're going their fees down from 0.39 to 0.25%. And that's only once they get to 5 billion or something like that. So the race is on, man. As we know, you got to be the one ETF that covers wherever you're going to be. And the fight is on to be that one Bitcoin ETF with volume as the race for fees. Pretty cool that they, they notch down their fees and then they say the fees only kick in when we have certain net ass assets under value, et cetera. Nonetheless, the race is on. Crude. We're going to talk a little bit about crude this morning. You got crude right now, negative by 24 pennies at 76.52. You jump over to gold. You're seeing it run again, man. If you haven't checked out that gold report, folks, now is a great time to do it. Gold up by $13 to 2058 this morning. You see the action overnight, 2059.20 at about 2.30 a.m. Eastern time. You get to notes and bonds. So overnight, we get to a high of 111.27. We're just off where we are, where we were there, and you see where we are. We're basically right where you got on that acceleration at 3.15 p.m. yesterday. You had price spike higher, you had yields drop lower, we have a 10-year at 4.05, and we hear for the chairman tomorrow in terms of where they expect they will be. Don't expect a cut tomorrow, but boy, the market, maybe rightfully so, knows that it's coming down the line pretty quickly, to put it lightly. Dollar index on weaker yield, you see the drop off yesterday, right? We were all the way at 103.82. That three o'clock drop off on the dollar, you go from 103.60 down to about 103.40, and we're just off those lows in the dollar right now at 103.48. Okay, where do we kick it off with this morning? Let's talk a little bit of global GDP. Why not? Strong numbers in the U.S., and that's uh, translating to strong numbers in the globe. And this having to do with U.S., it's having to do with China and the stimulus they're putting on there. That's pretty, pretty much the reason for the upgrade. IMF lifts the world GDP outlook on U.S. strength and China fiscal support. There it is in the headline, right? Global economy seen expanding 3.1% this year, 3.2% in 2025. Soft landing is likely, but risks remain from war and inflation. Now, those risks greater in Europe, I'd say, than where we are right now. Definitely when you look at the growth it's one thing to be dealing with inflation, but at least we have the growth to go with it. Europe, not so much the case, man. But nonetheless, when you look at the whole globe, you're talking about three plus percentage point. Now, they were looking for just 2.9% in October. So they up it to 3.1% right now. The fund kept its 2025 forecast unchanged at 
0.2%. Yeah, and, um, you know, not surprising where it might be the hottest. The forecast assume commodity prices, including fuel, will drop this year and next, and that interest rates will ease. I mean, keep your eye on that one, right? Because we have we have some oil stories, okay, and we're going to jump around. But you're talking about oil right now at a pretty decent price at the pump, right? What are we at in crude right now? Seventy-six dollars and change, I believe. I just covered it. What are we looking at? Seventy-six sixty-two. The price of crude. You take a look at a three-year weekly on crude. Pretty remarkable. This is where we are in terms of lower price compared to where we've been. Yet, nonetheless, what do we have going on? We have assumptions that commodity prices, including fuel, will drop this year and next, and that interest rates will ease. The funds economists factored in, for instance, that the Federal Reserve, ECB, and Bank of England will hold interest rates for the first half of this year before gradually reducing them as inflation slows. Inflation in the fourth quarter cooled more than projected as energy prices eased and that it expects the deceleration to continue through 2025, bringing global inflation down to 4.4 from 6.8. That's where it gets bonkers, right? They're going to bring it down to 4.4. Their growth estimates are, what, 3.1. Now you see where the U.S. is compared to where everybody else is, right? What do we just get for CPE numbers? 2.9%. Maybe you can make the case we're at three to four percent on the hot side of things. Probably more realistically, three to three point five percent right now. That can change, of course. But no, they're just hoping to bring the globe down to four point four from six point eight, and they got growth of three point one. And check out the U.S. on there, two point one. I mean, among developed nations, folks, just gangbusters where the U.S. is. You know, and 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 that's important to keep in mind, man as the gloom and doom marches on as we approach political season. Because, I mean, look at these numbers, right? Look at the forecast for this year's GDP. Look at the forecast for next year's GDP. The only ones ahead of us are China and India. And it's going to be really tough for the U.S. to keep up with China and India when the growth that's possible there is not really possible in such a developed economy as ours in the U.S. Euro, 0.9%, right? And 1.7 next year. Now, have more confidence in these numbers in 2024 because we've seen how hard it is to forecast. We've seen how, how wrong analysts have been in this market. We've seen how difficult it is to forecast. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network, Fast Market. We talk to him every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 9.15 in the morning. And I love when Kevin says, you know, stay current. Don't go too far out. That's where maybe you get yourself in trouble. Yeah, you want to make some big wagers and you go very far out into the future and you're right. Of course, you can, you know, pull some returns. But the reason why is because it's very difficult. So try not to go too far out. You won't get yourself in so much trouble. So stay on these and look at where the U.S. is. And if you look at where inflation is, man, they're 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 ahead as in we have eased inflation more so than many of these developed countries as well and again only china and india above us and then you push out to 2025 as well but nonetheless the imf they jack it up growth estimates going up and uh yeah it's going to be an important one man we got a lot to talk about today we got fed day tomorrow we got microsoft we got google boy some of these cloud numbers they're going to be talking about man azure right 27 percent growth azure for their cloud are they going to be able to meet that? We're going to find out. The market, we're going to take a look at Microsoft. How about that $3 trillion company? Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hinks from Schwab Network. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures right now, negative by about 12 points. We have markets in the red as we begin today, the biggest of all in terms of earnings. You got Microsoft out there, Biggest company in the world, man, $3 trillion. We're actually at already 3.07, which is $70 billion over that price level yesterday. Now, that's a weekly, okay, not zoomed in. Check out the action just yesterday, man. You finish up to almost 4.10. This market plows higher to 4.14. This market, Microsoft shares. We're back a bit to 4.12.80. So Microsoft's going to be out with their numbers after the bell today. And, yeah, you jump over to that Analyze tab, man. You are at $3.066 trillion. Dollars, Pretty amazing, man. Now, as I mentioned, the cloud is going to be in focus from Microsoft after the bell tonight. Yeah, and you jump over to Apple. Apple's at 2.95 about. So Microsoft already, what, $100 billion plus ahead of Apple as they just continue higher. To talk about some of the market action, folks, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. The team at the Schwab Network, they break it down, folks. You're talking about three hypothetical trades, and not often do you have the biggest company in the world reporting earnings after the bell. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yes, Microsoft is a is an amazing company of, of the highest quality. The problem is it's a 39 PE, Tommy, so the bar is extremely high for them to report earnings, and they need to show what AI is doing to help cloud and all those things last year. This stock rallied 65% last year, Tommy. So, yep, the bar is high. Uh, this is a high-quality company, but it is not cheap. <laughs> not cheap, to put it lightly, man. Uh, it seems like Microsoft just doesn't stop going up, man. And really interesting when you look at not the trouble that Apple has had, but just the way that, you know, Microsoft's uh, chat GPT, their deal with open AI, the acceleration, uh, I was listening this morning, Kevin, to Bloomberg early, early, and they were talking about just some of the numbers. Pretty amazing, the the bar, like you 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 stated, that these companies have to go with, something like 27% growth, and that's like a $50 billion business, Azure. Um, I, you put it on the PE numbers, do, do you think they're going to eclipse that? I mean, that 
as, as somebody that runs a business, right, we're all, I mean, just amazing numbers, amazing growth. It seems like the bar is pretty lofty when you're talking about growing a business that's pushing $50 billion and almost 30% growth, but that's how the stock's priced. What do, what do you, I, do you have any estimates of where your, your brain is for that type of, of growth estimate they're talking about tonight? Uh, yeah, growth year over year at 29%. So Oof. remember, stocks really don't like any deceleration in growth. And so the question is, does the AI component at Microsoft uh, help Azure either get market share or continue to grow? I mean, they're going to be heavily scrutinized because eventually, Tommy, with some of the valuations here, people are going to want to see AI actually come to the bottom line. And, and, you know, other than NVIDIA and a little bit of AMD, you know, there's not a lot of profits to be shown for AI. They're, they're, they're getting there, but. Oh, I might have lost you a little there, Kevin. Gremlins are getting his phone lines because he's giving too much information out about Microsoft and NVIDIA, folks. Maybe we can get him back. Let me know, Al, if we get him back. I can't hear you. All right, we'll see if we get him back. Yeah, look at NVIDIA shares. He makes a great point. These companies are the ones that are spending all the money with NVIDIA and AMD, right? That's where all that money is coming from when you talk about the orders they have, the backlog they have, backlog that they have for those chips. Uh, Microsoft, they're the ones buying it. Google, they're the ones buying it. We get to find out tonight. I know Kevin's running around. Maybe we can get him back. We'll see. Uh, all right, let's jump back to Microsoft shares. So we've looked at this equity. You check out the A point, possibly. At the beginning of last year, 218, you drive up to a high in the beginning of July 2023, that high about 365. You back off the C point about 310. And yeah, you're talking about a full expansion of 457, and that would be your A to B leg, driving from about a low of 220, up to your high point of 362. So you're talking about, yeah, almost 140 points, and you take it off that low of about 310, drive ship to 457. The one thing that I will say here, okay, you back this equity down into the last three months. This was their last earnings event in October when this equity was at 326. You're going to be coming into their earnings event almost $100 higher. So remember that, man. Kevin makes the great points about expectations. I love the point he made about P.E. at 39 for a company like Microsoft. How do you get a P.E. of 39? Well, your price that you're trading at is 39 times your earnings. The way you do it is you grow a business like Azure at almost 27, 29 percent, he said. Pretty wild on that accord. All right, we jump over to Google. Google shares, we're almost at 170, man. Google's got some big expectations as well. Now, what's interesting here is you jump to the Azure cloud numbers, right? Azure's at, I think, 50, 70 billion. I was hearing today, right? Amazon Web Services, they're above 90 billion. Okay, Google's only at 35. Now, what's amazing is Microsoft is growing the fastest of all of them when you look at the cloud. So Microsoft has the fastest growth. They're ahead of Google, and they're still growing faster than Google. So Google's got some issues, man. And they got to make it right. Now, you jump over to the Analyze tab on Google, and you're talking about a company that's valued at $2 trillion. So two-thirds of the company Microsoft is. That's part of the reason why, in terms of lower numbers on their cloud sector and lower growth numbers. And Kevin makes the point, again, you don't want to see decelerating growth. And the issue there, when they came out with their last earnings, folks, okay, one of the reasons why this thing accelerated higher, you put it back to a daily. We're going to go back to Microsoft here. And listen, I have Microsoft in a retirement account. Absolutely amazing company. Very fortunate I do in terms of how things worked out. Been in there a while, okay? As in it wasn't just the AI play. But this acceleration on their last earnings, we got to put it to a daily again. When they came out with their number, I remember when they did it, man, okay? They came out October 24th. You see the gap higher. Now, the market pulled back, okay? That was the demise. I want to go over this because it's so important. Here's the S&P. OK. Microsoft came out with their numbers here on October 24th. If you recall, that's when the market was making lows. OK, so don't get distracted by the fact that you have a little bit of a pullback after their earnings. Their last earnings were gangbusters, folks. They accelerated the growth. They crushed everything. There was your pop on October 24th. You had to pull back with what was happening with the market there. 
you pull back with the market and then this thing takes off from 328 we're going to come into their earnings at about 414 and the reason why was you had accelerating growth the reason why i keep reiterating this is tonight they're coming out with the numbers they're looking for last quarter at least it's what 29 percent year over year growth in azure okay when you're doing numbers that are like 50 billion dollars and you're expected to grow 30 percent year over year those numbers become very difficult as you approach 100 billion and you're going to be there in a year or two so my brain has a little bit of a problem trying to figure out how exactly you grow with those numbers but guess what microsoft's figured it out that's why they're the most expensive company in the world at over three trillion dollars I'm not looking for a huge pullback, but very difficult to imagine how they beat that market with the optimism they priced in. And as Kevin mentioned again, they haven't made the money yet, okay? This is optimism. The people making the money are NVIDIA. The people that make the money are AMD. They're the one with the backlogs for the chips. Uh, and these companies have to prove it, but we'll find out after the bell tonight. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got the stock market open. You have markets slightly in the red right now. You're looking at the S&P futures, negative by just five points. We're still trading at 49.50, quite the lofty level. You back it up to where we were, 3 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. You had a price point of about 49.30. I'm going to back up bonds and notes for a second. You jump over to the ZN. As I mentioned, I was doing the show yesterday at about 3 o'clock. You see where we were in the 10-year. Okay, the 10-year is at about 111.16, so we've traded to higher price. You see it happening yet again today, right? Even since where we were at about 8.30 this morning, you have the 10-year trading higher. That's backing off yields right now. Let's see where yields are right now. We're probably under 4.05 right now. Four point, yeah, we're just under 4.05%, the yield on the 10-year right now. Now, the acceleration yesterday, okay, which was a surprise, which is where you got this pop in the markets, which is where you got the pullback in yield, and I'm going to jump over to the dollar index just to show you how important all this stuff was. The pullback, that's at 3 o'clock as well. So what do we have? We have yields pulling back lower. We have weakness in the dollar. As I, says, as I say this, man, it's continuing to drop, right? We have yields continuing to weaken. We have the dollar continuing to weaken. That's going to put some pressure on the Fed in terms of you can't have the 10-year at like 3.5% and have the Fed at 5.5%, right? That can't happen. No matter what the Fed says, that can't happen. But to go over what happened when that was happening last night, okay, because it's interesting. One of the headlines I have up to talk about here, this is from Bloomberg out this morning. Yeah, early this morning, talking about Nassim Tlaib. So he's the author of The Black Swan, right? Yeah, Death Swan. Uh, no, he's talking about Death Swan, but he is the author of, is it The Black Swan? I should know. Yeah, Black Swan. There it is. Uh and he's talking about swelling death, okay? The political system makes it tougher to address. I think we can all agree on that, no matter where you are, man. The politics make it harder to get anything done right now in terms of addressing things. Politics, the art of compromise, very difficult to get the compromises going on these days. Nonetheless, you jump to this, so we talk about swelling debt, but it is interesting. So this is why it was a surprise yesterday. This is the news that hits at 3 p.m. Eastern time. You had the Treasury cutting their quarterly borrowing estimate to $760 billion. Now, that's still the borrowing for 90 days, okay? But the borrowing estimate had been as high as almost $820 billion. Okay, so what happens? You have the Treasury saying it now estimates that they need $760 billion in net borrowing for January through March, or already basically through January, okay? Debt managers kept their estimate for the Treasury's cash balance for the end of March at 750. Now that's pretty much in line. So what do you have happening there? You have the smaller borrowing need was driven by higher projected net fiscal flows. Okay, they're taking in more money. We're still spending it, but they're taking in a little bit more money and having more cash on hand at the start of the quarter than expected. They also had more to start the January through March period. Some, okay, some, like co-head of US rate strategy, he probably had a tough night because at 3 o'clock he found out his prediction that it was going to go up to $855 billion was actually way off. When it came in, it actually a decrease. So what happens there? The government needs to borrow less money. As a result of borrowing less money, they don't have to pay as high of a yield because they're not deluging the markets with supply. As a result, you have yields staying low. If yields are low, you're going to have a weaker dollar. When you have low yields and you have a less expensive dollar, the stock market is gonna like that and it's gonna go up. And all that happened, man. So remember that when you hear these types of, you know, headlines. Um, that's not the one I'm talking about, this one. Talking about the debt, because it is a real issue here, okay? Um, but that is on a much longer term basis. And that is the tail risk that is out there. OK, which is definitely present, but on a shorter term basis, you see what happens, man. And hopefully the politics um, do allow some type of, of deal out there because it is possible, man. That's for sure. OK, we talked a little bit of crude. We talked about the IMF, right? The IMF is talking about that we're going to get more global growth. Why are we going to get it? You might see an assumption that maybe commodity prices and energy prices are going to ease along with rates that are going to be going down. Well, this might back up that theory. Saudi Aramco, they drop expansion plans, raising demand questions. The company asked to maintain capacity at 12 million barrels a day. Surprise move is going to raise questions about the view on oil demand. So I think we got an oil demand problem. As Saudi Arabia, why would they be abandoning a plan to boost their oil output capacity? 
okay, if you ever thought you were going to be able to sell that oil into the market. The only reason you might do that is because you might think you have a demand problem. Last thing you want to do is provide too much supply if you have a demand problem, right, especially if you're a monopoly controlling a finite amount of a commodity that you control. And that is a quote unquote huge reversal that will raise questions about the kingdom's view on future demand. That surprise move comes after the world's biggest oil exporter had said just in November that it was progressing very well with a multi-billion dollar project to boost capacity to 13 million barrels a day by 2027. They don't, they're not into that right now. They're cool with 12 million right now. Um, they have capacity for 12, they're only producing nine after curb the output for Oprah Plus. So why are you gonna up your capacity to 13 if you're only doing nine? They're good with 12 right now. And, and yeah, you should read into that, man, okay? Because that's a long-term estimate. And if they're not comfortable pushing out their production to 2027, then be careful in this crude market going forward, man. Yeah, and maybe this explains a lot more about why crude continues to struggle even in the face of extreme geopolitical risk going on when we're stuck at $77 and we're paying about $3 at the pump, which is pretty remarkable in that context. All right, what else we got pulled up? Let's talk a little bit of data servers. This one's interesting, just from Black, Black, um, Blackstone. Now, we didn't get to this one yesterday, but how about it? $25 billion empire of power-hungry data centers. Going to be interesting to see how this transforms the world. Private equity giant says landlord QTS could be one of the best investments ever. This building here is in Phoenix, I believe. Yeah, Phoenix is where they're pushing that one out. 60 football fields. Yeah, the first of five hulking bunk bunkers are under construction only 30 miles away. Engineers are plotting another complex on 400 acres, three times the footprint of Mall of America. Yeah. $10 billion takeover of data center operator QTS in 2021 is what they did, Blackstone. $10 billion takeover, and they're ramping it up. And yeah, it seems like that's going to be the, the par going forward as data is everything, to put it lightly, right? All right, let's jump around to some of the numbers we have already this morning. GM with some pretty strong numbers there. Sees higher profits ahead as 2023 problems recede. They expect to throw off more cash from strong U.S. sales. Uh, and that the economy will continue to be resilient. You know, GM trading higher this morning. We jump over to GM. There's a pop for you, 9.3% for GM shares. Look at that pop, man. GM up $3.30, 38 dollars You put this thing on a weekly. All right, where are we bumping into? We got a little bit of area of ice, maybe at 40, 41 bucks up there. You might run into. We're off the lows at 26 bucks just back in October. Pretty remarkable. But GM gets quite a bit, up by 9.3 percent. Let's see how some of the companies reporting are going to kick things off. You got Microsoft up by four tenths percent. You jump over to Google shares. They report after the bell. Google up about one tenth percent. We're going to talk about AMD next, folks. AMD shares, they're also after the bell. AMD, down a little bit to kick off the trading session. Stay tuned, folks. Don't go away. We'll be back in three minutes. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets slightly in the red as we pick things up and we jump over to AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. They're out with their earnings after the bell today as well. So remember, we got Microsoft, you have Google, you have AMD. Those are the three big after the bell today, among many others, of course. But you jump over to AMD. So we're negative about 70 pennies. We're off by about four tenths percent. When you're looking at the expected move right now, you're talking about about a $16 move priced into this equity in either direction, right? You're trading at 177.50 almost. And you jump down to the 177.50 strike price. The puts and the calls are going to cost you about $8.30. You're looking at about $16.50, $17. And that is if you want action through Friday, right? A lot of that, $15.50, just having to do with the action that you're getting through tonight. But nonetheless, you buy those options. You're looking at $8 to $9 in either direction. You have to make up just to cover the premium. Point is, huge move priced into AMD shares. And not surprising with the run that they've had, man. This equity just traded, folks, in October from $93.12. You doubled it to $184.92 last week. We're just off those highs. You put it to the 15-minute, and you see we've just been chopping around since making those highs last Thursday with AMD shares coming out after the bell. Jump over to Microsoft. And, yeah, that's a record open for Microsoft, man. Close yesterday at 410. You did make it up to 414 in the overnight session, but you're backing off a bit. We're at 411.41 right now for Microsoft. And I mentioned Google. They're out with their numbers after the bell as well. Google, 140, excuse me, 154.81. You jump over to the weekly. This thing's at all-time highs. And if you're looking at a possible A to B, C to D projection, almost 170 on that equity. You jump over to Google. And you're looking at about $8. So percentage-wise, right, now it makes sense, man. Google, not quite the company AMD is in terms of the volatility they might have on their earnings. You look at Google, you're looking at about an $8.28 move priced in for their earnings. What is that, about a 6% move possibly priced in for the volatility you could expect for their earnings. And you jump over to Microsoft, and you're looking at about a $17 move for a $411 stock, so about a 4% move. So again... Right, Microsoft, about a 4% move priced in in either direction. AMD, 9%, 10% almost, and Google at about a 6% number. All right, we jump over to UPS with their numbers today. How about 12,000 worker, 1,200? 12,000? Yeah, 12,000. 12,000. 12,000 jobs is what UPS is going to cut as delivery business slows. Domestic and international volumes declined in the final quarter of 2023 from a year earlier. 
And it's already been a tough go around for these companies, man. You take a look at this thing. It's been on a one-way trip for the last two years. From 233, we came into those earnings in almost 160. And boy, this channel almost draws itself, man. You line up those highs somewhere to that degree. The bottom side of that is pretty close as well. And you get some tough go-arounds for UPS shares to the downside. And the tough part is, you know, and where does this line up, right? An art, not a science. Maybe it's a little bit higher. Maybe it's a little bit lower to encapsulate all those highs you got back in 2022. But you see, basically, it's been a series of lower lows, lower highs. We're trading off the upper boundary line of that channel. And boy, it's a tough go around, to put it lightly. And FDX, not far off from that, man. You know, they're up to 319. They've had quite acceleration, but they, even they're off 2.1% on those UPS numbers. And yeah, they're going to be cutting 12,000 workers is what they're doing. A move that the package delivery giant said is going to result in a billion dollars in savings. Most of the cuts will be to full-time and part-time management positions and contract workers, okay? And executives said they don't expect these jobs to return when parcel volumes return. They're trimming the fat, man. Be interesting to see how this comes down in terms of their last deal they got. All that talk was, remember when it was all put out there that UPS drivers are going to be making what was it, $170,000 a year, I think, in five years at the end of that contract that they just signed. Uh, but yeah, not everyone's protected in there when business slows. Excuse me. 12,000 workers, man. They have 85,000 workers in management is what they have. So it's a big number. They got a lot of workers out there, but UPS trying to right that ship, and it's been a tough go around for them. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, I mean, this one we all kind of know, right? J.P. Morgan, they're warning that we got a big concentration in U.S. stocks, man. The top 10 stocks are nearing historical 2000 peak. Strategists warn of a pullback led by top U.S. equities. Well, we get to find out a lot today, man. And yeah, they're nearing that level, folks, but things are different. <laughs> I know, what a, what a phrase, right? Don't quote me on that one. But these companies are taking a lot of money to the bottom line. Microsoft might have a P.E. of 39, and that's a little bit intimidating, but if you were around in 2000, folks, all you had to do was push out a company that had dot-com in the name. Maybe some of that's going on with AI right now, okay? But the companies that are getting a lift from the AI right now are the biggest, most profitable companies in the world. And that wasn't quite the case back then. I mean, you did have instances, and I like to look at it, man, Cisco. It's a great discussion when you look at a company like Cisco, though, because look at Cisco. When you run up on multiples, man, you can be around... 25 years later, okay, and you can have a strong company that's grown for 25 years, but guess what? When multiples get out of whack, you can never make up the difference. Cisco gets up to $82 in the year 2000, right? And yeah, it takes you, what, 25 years to get back to 50 bucks. Now listen, you were back down at 10 bucks from 2002, okay? You were back down at 15 bucks in 2011, and since then, it's had a nice run. But nonetheless, that's one example. There are many others that are not around, of course, over that series uh, of time. All right, we got to talk about this one, man. So Elon, he's moving on from cars, and he's coming for your brain. Elon's out there on X, formerly known as Twitter, saying Neuralink has been implanted in a brain chip, um, has implanted their brain chip in a human. No details about the patient given, probably good for their um, privacy, but Musk says the person's recovering well. And we are on the forefront, man, when they're, they're putting chips in brains, not just in products. Um, I've read a few articles on this one, man. And it's one thing, you know, having a car company. It's another one putting chips in people's brains. If there's one thing that Elon does do is that he overpromises and underdelivers occasionally. And when you're talking about the health and putting chips in people's brains versus just a car company – something you want to be careful of, to put it lightly. All right, let's jump around. Apple shares right now down about three-tenths percent, 191.31. Going to be interesting to see if Microsoft lives up to the hype, man. They're the only trillion, $3 trillion company in the market right now. Apple just under that price tag. Microsoft up about a buck forty-three. You know, CNBC was pushing out this morning to pull it up. It's interesting. They, they labeled it as breaking news, CNBC. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder how much they're getting paid. Um... And that was the headline of breaking news this morning. Apple Vision Pro Review. This is the future of computing and entertainment. 3500 bucks is all it costs you. 
Uh, the expectations are they're going to sell more than you initially thought out there. But nonetheless, we're getting some reviews and people like it. And yeah, it is probably going to be the change in terms of how things get done. Nobody thought you were going to be on your phone all the time, right? But it seems like whether it's augmented reality, virtual reality, somehow transforming your phone into that reality, I think it's all coming down the line eventually. Apple shares slightly in the red, Microsoft slightly in the positive. Stay tuned, folks. We got one more segment. Don't go away. I think we're going to have a special guest coming up. And his name may be Tommy O'Brien. We'll see. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Get it for you. Welcome back, folks. Hey, did you say welcome back, everybody? Welcome back, everybody. What do we got, Tommy? We got stocks in the red. Oh, who is that? Did you show him? Whoa, who's that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's that? Tell him. Buzz. It's Buzz. It's Bud Lightyear, everybody. Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien. Say hi to everybody. They're seeing hi, you. everybody. Hi, everybody. Look, there you are. Are you wearing your skeletons, too? Oh. Oh, yeah, we got the good skeletons. Look, they can see your buzz and everything. You see that? Oh. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Buzz Lightyear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am Buzz Lightyear. Tommy loves the show. He wanted to say hello to everybody. He misses you. Tommy, we got Microsoft earnings after the bell. We got AMD. We got Google. What do you think? Are they going to beat or are they going to miss? Are they going to beat or miss? We're watching Buzz. 
Huh. Are we watching Buzz? We're moving on, folks. We love McQueen. We love dinosaurs, but we're on to Toy Story. To- Toy Story, 1995. Hello. Hello. Hello, Buzz. Hello, Buzz Lightyear. Hey, Tommy, do we have a birthday coming up this week? How Hello. old How old are you going to be? Tell Hello. everybody. You got to tell them how old. How old? Three. Three. Show them. How old? How old? Three. How old? Three. Three. Three, Three old. Three years old, everybody. I know, huh? They all remember when you were born. They were watching. Three years ago. Hello. Uh, hello. 1995 was Toy Story. We've watched Toy Story 1. I want my McQueen game. You want your McQueen game, I know. And then you're doing pterodactyls. Are you doing pterodactyls too? Oh, he's flying. Oh, were you flying? I think you were. Yeah. All right, Tommy, we got to finish up the show. We're going to take a look at Microsoft as we come in. Tommy, Microsoft's got their earnings. The stock, the stock never goes down. It's up three-tenths percent. Do you think they're going to beat? How's Azor going to do? What do you think? The cloud? Cloud. The cloud. I know. It's all about the cloud. Can you imagine what life's going to be like when he's my age, folks, 40 years from right now? Imagine what those numbers are going to be like for Azor. My goodness, right? Oh, he's flying. We got pterodactyls here, folks. Wow. Wow. Tommy, what's what's the raptor say? Can you give him a raptor? Cow, cow. Cow, cow, cow. What does the pterodactyl say? Oh, what's the pterodactyl say? What's it say? All right. All right, and then this is the end. Let's give him a T-Rex. What's the T-Rex say? Uh, and what about Indominus Rex? What about... Uh, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman. Wait, can I show you? Don't you show me? You can show me. Say bye to everybody. Bye, everybody.